A woman dies because she can't keep her insulin cool during a power outage. A child is dead and her probable killer is acquitted. These are only two of the millions of examples of America's and humanity's dependence on reaction instead of proaction. I want to discuss today why I believe this is a dangerous trend. April's Fury is a day that will live on in most Alabama and Georgia residents' minds for a long time to come. April 27, 2011, an outbreak of tornadoes swept across Alabama and Georgia, leaving behind a path of destruction that was startling to see. As it looked as if a bomb had gone off and completely decimated areas, taking many lives with it. Many died during the storm itself. However, it was the people who died afterward that was the most tragic, because it was those people whose lives could have been saved if preventative measures would have been taken in the first place. 50-year-old Carol Lisa Fox of Rainsville in DeKalb County died when the power outage made it impossible for her to keep her insulin cool. This was not merely an hour-long or maybe even a day-long power outage. This was a power outage that crippled the entire state of Alabama and lasted for at least seven days. Personally, we didn't see power back on at our house within five days. At our friend's house, it was within six. Some, I've heard, lost power for nine, maybe even ten days. The tornadoes that swept through took out many power stations and made it impossible for the power to be restored within a timely period. Proactive measures could have been used to avoid this tragedy altogether. There wasn't just one instance of a diabetic having difficulty getting trouble. There were many diabetics who suffered through this, through this storm. I happen to know one who very nearly ended up in the same position had she not been able to find some ice for herself. My very best friend's mother had to call around to many places, scrambling to find ice to keep her insulin cool. When she called the Red Cross, they were extremely rude to her and told her to call someplace else, but when she called that place, they said that they had been out of ice for a long time. Now, one could think, well, there was nothing that could have been done about this, but that's the wrong line of thinking altogether. I think that there should have been an area that needed generators, that was required to have generators, so that this sort of tragedy didn't have to occur. It wasn't a big surprise to anybody that this could have happened. People, especially the people who run stores in these areas, have been here for years and years. They've seen weather like this, maybe not this severe, but they have seen storms. Why should it have been a big surprise that something like this could have happened? Did it never cross anybody's mind that, oh, maybe we could lose power for seven days? Proactive thinking is something that we need. Instead, we have reactive people who only want to take care of the mess after it's been made. The death and possible murder of little two-year-old Kaylee Anthony shocked the entire nation. People were glued to their TVs and to their computers watching the trial, moving right along with everything as if they were a part of it themselves. People began to take a personal stake in finding this woman guilty because all of the evidence that we had been presented with pointed towards her guilt. Imagine everyone's shock and horror when this woman was found not guilty by a jury of her peers. For whatever reason they decide to give us, whether it was because the evidence wasn't there or it didn't point to her, everybody has their own opinions and yes, so do I. I do believe that she's guilty and I believe that she's gotten away with murder. But after this case, people have finally decided to begin punishing those who don't report their children. I have here an article, or a photocopy of an article, on exactly that and of the story that I presented to you in the previous segment. Apparently now they're presenting a bill to the response of this not guilty verdict that would make it a felony crime for guardians, legal, legal caretakers, and parents not to notify law enforcement authorities within one hour of the death of a child or within 25, 24 hours of a missing child. Did it really take this for us to realize that? Did it really take the death of that little girl and acquittal of this woman to make us realize that this law should have been in place? It's ridiculous and it's horrifying to think that nobody thought 
that this could happen, that this law should be in place until after this happened. She's not the first person to ever murder her child. Unfortunately, she's not going to be the last person either. And whether she did or didn't do it, it really doesn't matter by this point because she can never be tried again. Even if she writes a book and she confesses everything, she can never be tried again and she can never be put in jail because of double jeopardy. It may be a great law for people who, who are innocent and people want to prove them guilty, but it leaves the door open for people who get away with things and then come right out and make money off of it. Sure, maybe she'll be fined or taxed, whatever you want to call it, for the money she makes off of this. But really, what does that matter? She's free, and her daughter is dead. These aren't the only examples I have of reactive thinking. Global warming. Now, before you go and start thinking, oh no, another Wiccan tree-hugging nut talking about global warming, let me explain myself. I don't so much believe in global warming because I believe that this is all just a cycle that the planet goes through. It gets hotter, it gets colder. It may just be something natural and it may balance itself out. However, because the numbers were fudged, because the people who did all the studies on global warming decided to cherry pick their facts, all of it has been dismissed by most people as just a fantasy that will never come true. But what if it is true? What if there is the possibility that the things that we do harm the planet? That all of our pollution will destroy the ozone layer, all of our cutting down trees might even destroy the oxygen, leaving us less capable of living here. What if there is something to it? Now, we don't have the right to go and destroy this world. Not because it was given to us by God, not because it's God itself. No, we don't have the right to do it because it doesn't belong to us. It belongs to everyone. When we do something that potentially damages the earth, we do something that potentially damages ourselves. Think about all of the oil runoff that goes into the water if you dump oil in your yard. Think about all of the trash along the beaches that hurt the animals. Those animals could get sick and spread that sickness to other animals. Eventually, everything will come back at us. Whether global warming is real or not, doesn't it make more sense to take care of the planet and avoid it before it happens, instead of waiting to see if it happens and then reacting to it? When it comes to what we should do, do whatever you can. The problem is most people think that because a lot of these facts were dismissed and other ones were exaggerated, that we don't have to worry about it. It takes so much less time to prevent something than it does to clean something up. So what does it take to be more proactive and less reactive? In the four short minutes I have left, I could never tell you everything. And in fact, I don't know everything. But I do have a few ideas that I hope people will take to heart. If you happen to live in an area where natural disasters or disasters of any kind are more prevalent, invest in a generator. Even if you think you're never going to use it, there may be times when it comes in handy. It's better to have one that you'll never use than to be without one when you absolutely need one. If you own a store, I would highly suggest that you invest in a generator. Also, make sure that you can keep ice in stock. That way, if a, if a power outage threatens your area for a prolonged period of time, you'll be able to supply diabetic patients with ice to help keep their insulin cold. Keep disaster supplies on hand. Everything from first aid kits to building materials, uh, tarps, flashlights, batteries, and a weather radio for when the power does go out. When it comes to things other than natural disasters, always try to make sure that you plan ahead for everything. This goes all the way back to having a planned escape route for exiting a building that's on fire, to teaching your child how to not talk to strangers. Be proactive. There's no way that you can completely erase reaction because reaction is necessary. However, proaction before anything happens will make it so that you can better react later. That's it for today's episode of My Mind on Film. I hope that everybody got something out of this and I would appreciate feedback whenever possible. Brightest blessings and I'll talk to you again sometime soon.